morning to you. It's still Thursday for me. I'm recording this on Thursday as Friday is a day off and I've got a big day ahead of me uh, today. I hope that you have a great day planned for yourself today. Uh, no better way to start it than with a copy of the Word. And remember to join us on Sunday morning, 845 for Sunday School, Bible study for all age groups. We've got the best Sunday School teachers of any church anywhere. So come and join us. We'll find a place for you where you will fit and feel welcome. And then, of course, 10 o'clock for worship service. We have a great uh, time together as we celebrate the goodness of our great and awesome God. And then uh, this evening, or Sunday evening at 4 o'clock, we have our small groups, and we'd love to have you join those too. Right now, join me as we continue our journey through the book of James. Remember yesterday, I told you that James was Jesus' half-brother, and uh, as such, he had uh, faced uh, a lot of persecution and trials, especially as he became the pastor of the church at Jerusalem. And in verse 2, he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. We talked about that. Because remember, these uh, early Christians, Jewish Christians that he was uh, writing to, had found themselves run away from their homes because of persecution. They were fleeing for their lives, and many of them had suffered a great deal. We don't suffer a whole lot of anything without getting upset. But listen to what James says. He says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. We become uh, more uh, able to endure. Uh, and that's what this idea of patience is, enduring steadfast endurance. Uh, when we face that more often, those, those first moments of persecution, of, of trials and tribulations, we uh, buck up and we say, I don't want to do this anymore. Get me out of this. But sometimes God leaves us there so that we can deal with uh, harder things, more difficult things as time comes by. That doesn't sound too appealing, does it? But understand, God has a plan and a purpose, and his plan and purpose is to use you in the face of trials and tribulations to minister to other people. Now, what does that do for you? Simply this, it allows you to be obedient to the Father. And when the Father allows us to be in those trials, we have to obediently stay there and listen to his voice as he comforts us, as he encourages us, as he guides us through the process so that we can continue to reach uh, a lost and hurting world. Listen to what he says in verse 4, and this is, this is what I'm talking about. He says, but let patience have its perfect work. Now, what's he mean there? Don't try to remove yourself from the suffering. Don't try to remove yourself from the difficult circumstances. Trust God to take care of you. Now, that doesn't mean when uh, you're in a burning vehicle, you just sit there. That's not what we're talking about. When you're being persecuted because of your faith, for instance, let's say you're at school and, and you've got people who are making fun of you because you take your Bible to school. You're at work and your coworkers are, are ridiculing you because you have prayed before your meal. When uh, you find your boss uh, upset with you and, and making life difficult for you because you have told him that you need to, to be at church on Sundays and Wednesdays and can't work on those days. Or because you are a vocal witness, they have told you that you uh, have to stop well, that's what we're talking about here. These kinds of trials, when people are coming at you because of your faith, James says, let, these, let this patience, this steadfast endurance, have its perfect work. Why? That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, he's not talking about material things here. He's talking about the spiritual grace and the, and the, the, the spiritual wisdom that you need in this life. It is not something that God just supernaturally puts his head, hand on our head and says, okay, you've got everything you need. It is a growing process, a maturing process. It's not a fun process, but it is a process that we must go through as the bondservants of Jesus, those willingly submitted, devoted slaves of Jesus Christ. We say, yes, Lord, whatever you want in my life, I'm going to do this. It's, it's kind of like working out at the, the gym. If you just uh, lift weights uh, with your arms all day, you're going to build up your arms and your chest and, and, and you're going to have a nice upper body strength. But if you ignore your legs, then those legs are going to be weak and spindly and you're going to look funny, uh, by the way. So what do you do? You have to do the whole work. You have to work out the whole body so that you can build everything up. And that's what God is doing. He's working out your whole spiritual life so that you can be a part of the body of Christ growing stronger and maturing. And that's important for us because here's what God wants us to do. He wants us to stay in the trials 
to fight the battles, to let him encourage us and strengthen us so that we may be perfectly mature. That's what that word means and complete, having everything we need to face the the burdens and the difficulties and the trials of, of this life. It's not fun, but it's worthwhile as you let the Spirit work in your life. Be blessed today. Hope to see you on Sunday. Be back here on Monday.